Tonight on VIP Insider, behind the scenes of America's favorite controversial family. The Darlings. For decades, we've cheered their victories, mourned their losses, and relished the lurid scandals that seemed to follow America's first family everywhere. We thought the Darling Dynasty couldn't get dirtier, but just last week, tragic lightning struck twice. First, New York Attorney General Patrick Darling's beloved wife, Ellen, perished in a suspicious fire at the family's country estate, leaving the Darlings to retreat en masse to the Imperial, the palatial Manhattan home where they've remained in seclusion. Margot, turn that off. We're still eating. We want to see. Why would you want to watch that garbage? Lindsay Darling's mom says you killed Mommy. Dude, are you serious? Lots of people are saying it. This is why I'm never having kids. Whoa, 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 listen to me, both of you. What happened to your mother was an accident. Even the police said so. I, I loved your mommy. Very much, you know that. Was this really an accident? Meanwhile, Wall Street insiders are saying Darling Enterprises may be facing troubled times. Analysts have downgraded DE stock in the wake of what may be the biggest Darling bombshell ever. Mr. Darling, the, arrest of Darling the board will see you now. Darling ...for the murder of Dutch George, the family's lawyer. Dutch's son, Nick George, who now serves the family in a similar capacity, spoke to reporters. Who will represent Mrs. Darling? Terry Duramian will serve as defense counsel for Mrs. Darling. Mr. Duramian's stellar record as America's premier defense attorney gives us every confidence Mrs. Darling will be found innocent. And she will be. Make no mistake. Mr. George, Mr. George, you've enjoyed a close relationship with the Darlings for decades, but now that your own father is the alleged victim in a Darling murder case, do you believe in the Darling curse? Well, the only curse I know about is being asked questions like that. Thank you all very much. No further questions. Someone looks cute on TV. You should see me in high def. <laughs> Mayor Bloomberg, Nick George. I just wanted to thank you on behalf of the Darling family for making this tribute possible. I will pass that on. Thank you. Bye. He's coming to Alan's service. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. They'll probably skip it like everybody else and show up at Letitia's trial. It's juicier. Well, person can only make it to so many Darling debacles. I'm sure you don't want me to come to the arraignment. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be any fun. The whole family's pretty freaked. I'm going to be holding a lot of hands. Who will be holding yours? I don't know. I hear Jeremy's going to be there. I know how fond he is of our family. You said you weren't angry anymore. I'm not. Doesn't mean I don't remember that you kissed Jeremy. Forgiveness isn't amnesia. Come here. Come here. Remember that thing we talked about doing? You talked about? Bringing that up now? You're the one who said you wanted to have another kid. Nick, I'm still in this marriage for the long haul. Come on. Let's, let's have a baby. All right, let's talk about this later, all right? I've got a room full of darlings waiting for me to help them figure out what the entertainment is going to be for Ellen's memorial service. My God. Is there anything these people won't ask you to do? I'm amazed they haven't asked you to take Letitia's case. Well, I guess even the darlings have their limits. I want Nick to defend your mother. What? What about this million-dollar Duramian guy that Nick recommended? Well, Nick was right to bring him on as a bridge. But now Mr. Duramian should make a graceful exit, and Nick should take over the case. You really expect him to stand up in court and defend the woman who's accused of murdering his father? My father. That woman is your mother. She did not commit this crime. She must not go to jail. What jury could possibly convict her? She's being defended by the victim's son. Something's troubling you. What did the board have to say? They're not happy. No? They want you to name a successor. Your mother is the vice chair. They know. And they all think she's going up the river too sweet. <laughs> They do, do they? Well, I suppose putting forward a succession plan might stabilize the stock until your mother's acquittal. You seem pretty optimistic. I am. Your mother will be proven innocent. Just so long as Nick takes the case. Okay, you have to go. What? 
You can't keep me up until 5.15 in the morning and throw me out on the street at 8.05. My day doesn't start till noon. I have to get to work. What do you even do? I've been so busy <laughs> mapping your bod for the past three days like this sweet moon of Venus it is. I forgot to ask. Um, superhero. Oh. Mm. Just remember, whatever happens, every moment we've had has been completely real, and I like you a lot. I really do. What does that mean? It means, see you later. Okay. After Patrick's eulogy, it was suggested there be a song, choir, soloist. What about Elton John? Mm. He'll play Candle in the Wind for anyone. Genius. Patrick, was there anyone whose music Ellen was particularly fond of? Kenny G. <gasps> that is so Ellen. I'll call Kenny G. Oh, great. They're all here. Hi, Daddy. Oh, my darling girl. Brian has just told me that the board has become fearful for the future of the company. And they are going to demand that I choose a new vice chair to replace your mother. Uh, successor. Exactly. And I'm your father. I have an equal and imperishable love for each of you. I'm not capable of making that decision. So I'm going to need someone that I trust to make it for me, and I... I can't think of anyone better suited to determine the future of the company than the fellow to whom I have entrusted the task of steering the family through each and every day. And that is you, Nick. Good luck. I think it kind of is me. <laughs> you know what I mean. We should be next in line to run the company. Oh, no, Nick would never recommend to Daddy that I should be in charge of anything. Why? Mm, he doesn't see me that way. Why well, does Nick see you? Um, I'm a silly rich girl who doesn't know what she wants. Is that what you are? That's not what I see. But you have to wonder, who's he gonna pick? Patrick's running for Senate, and, you know, business is hardly his thing. And Jeremy. Jeremy's just a bubble of goo. Juliet's off on some island somewhere. And, well, Brian isn't even Daddy's son. And you have an MBA from Columbia. I do. And look at me. I'm sleeping with you to get secrets from Daddy. I'm very loyal. Completely. It ought to be me. Now you sound like someone who knows what they want. I do. And right after I get it, I'm gonna go talk to Nick. <laughs> Nikki! We get front row seats for Mom Brandon, right? You're not gonna hit me again, are you? You're not gonna kiss my wife again, are you? No plans. No cool. So who's this prosecutor they got on mom's case? Ah, uh, real pit bull. It's the kind of lawyer the state uses when they really want to make an example of someone. I hate this guy already. It's not a guy. Speak of the devil. Nick George. Oh, the lions. You're the... Uh, th this is her? No, the lions, Jeremy, darling. Oh, hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Last time I read about you, Nick, you were representing orphans and nuns. Well, last time I read about you, Nolly, you were sleeping with your boss, and I have his job. And you have the darlings. Cream rises. Nothing personal. See you in the Coliseum. People of the state of New York versus Letitia Van Kirk, darling. Oh. <laughs> Sweetheart, please. 
<laughs> On behalf of my client, Your Honor, uh, we enter a plea of not guilty. Objection? Already. Your Honor, Mr. Duramian is an out-of-state lawyer and as such needs the sponsorship of local counsel in order to appear before this court. I had uh, that paperwork filed with the clerk yesterday, Your Honor. That may be the case, but Ms. Lyons seems to be correct. It didn't make it to the actual file. This hearing is adjourned. Mrs. Darling will be remanded into custody Your until... Honor, Your Honor, you want me to take... No, no, no. Nick will take care of it. Nick. Your Honor, Nick George, General Counsel for the Darling Family. Congratulations. Sit down. I am prepared to act as local counsel until Mr. Duramian can file the necessary paperwork. Fine. I'll let it go today, but please be sure to file those papers properly, Mr. Duramian. Absolutely, Your Honor. You, Mr. George, may proceed. We humbly ask that bail be waived and Mrs. Darling be allowed to remain free on her own recognizance. Objection. Your Honor, the defendant is clearly... Your Honor, Mrs. Darling has no... Your Honor, do you really want to send the message to the rich or above the law? She's got a Gulfstream 5 gas up and waiting for her at Teterboro. Bail is set in the amount of $20 million. The defendant will remain in custody until bond is posted. <clears throat> Your Honor, I know this is highly irregular, but we have taken it upon ourselves to contact the Darling's private bank, and bail will be paid forthwith. First time I've seen that. Mr. Darling, you are free to go, but you will be under strict house arrest until further notice. Next. I don't know what the hell went wrong with those papers. Did you get a proof of service from the clerk? Yeah, of course I did. But damned if I know where it got to. Well, that's all right. Things happen. It's a pity that the only thing that went off flawlessly was the shameless parade of our wealth. Where are we going? This is a little back way, uh, Daniel Boone during the Mango trial. Should be quiet as church. Is Did you murder Dutch George? What did you tell us? Where's the car? Did you plan this? Is this going to be a repeat of the Harvey Sutton trial? Where the client is completely innocent. Just as Harvey Sutton was innocent, despite his subsequent confession. Clark, can you get the car back here now, please? So you managed to live outside the spotlight for over 30 years. Are you going to take the stand in your own defense? Is the reality of the situation is you can get a fair trial? personal don't be a hater you hooked up with me and then arrested my mom it's called a hit and run oh, i thought it was called a setup jeremy if it's not a setup then what is it some sort of evil plan to use me get secret information if it was i would have asked you a few questions don't you think yeah the only thing i remember asking was for you to do a certain thing a little bit harder i told you everything was real you a lot. It's just complicated. I'm gonna see you tonight. We need to talk about this. Wow, that under not gonna happen. It was great while it lasted. That degree of mayhem could never have been predicted, Trip. And what about those papers that you failed to file? Or the fact that you were standing there preening in the silvery light of the cameras while barely a foot away from you? My beloved wife was unraveling like tape from a cassette. I don't care how many shoddy heiresses you've returned from the gnawing jaws of justice to the safety of their infinity pools. You will not be defending my wife. Fine. You ready to take this case? Brian, if you think heading into a court with me, the victim's son, as her lawyer, is gonna fly... It exonerates her by design. No, it doesn't. It makes us look like we're all in bed together. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll have a new list of attorneys for you in the morning. Thank you. Excuse me. 
What's going on? All will be well, my darling. Just wait. There's not an argument you can make that'll change my mind, Brian. I'm not taking the case. I can't believe you. We asked you one friggin' thing. Brian, you asked me to do everything. Why shouldn't we? You don't think you owe this family? Your whole life we've treated you like a friggin' prince. A prince? I'm the cleanup crew, Brian. I'm the guy who clears your tickets, plans your funerals, and calls Kenny G. Oh, and in between chores, I have to decide which one of you spoiled brats gets to inherit the kingdom. And oh yes, on occasion, I'm invited to sit at the main table, but that's just until somebody drops their plate and I'm sent to fetch a mop. Well, that's what family is. We're all expendable until we're needed. At least you get paid for it. Brian, get this straight. I'm not taking this case, now or ever. See me, Dad? Yeah, Patty. Uh, have you given some thought as to what you're going to say at Ellen's memorial service? This eulogy could be a real milestone in your political life. Dad, it's bad enough that we covered up Ellen's death. Do we really have to capitalize on it? Well, we don't have to. Huh. One wonders, though, who precisely is best served by missing this opportunity. Certainly not Ellen. She wanted nothing more than for you to win this election, you know that. What am I supposed to get up there and say? Share the pain of this unthinkable loss. And be a human being. A human being. I'll try. Afternoon, Counselor. Uh, what do you want? You're not Letitia's lawyer now, are you? Because that would be close. No, I'm not, but I still represent the family. The family would like Letitia to attend Ellen's memorial service tomorrow. She's under house arrest. Come on, give her an example. She should be in jail. And by the way, no need to thank me for finding your father's murderer. How did you end up on the wrong side of this fight? What kind of case have you got? Golden. A 40-year affair gone bad, a plane that's been tampered with, an eager witness, and a juicy chance to arrest her again if she shows her face outdoors. You wouldn't dare. Hmm? Try me. You're kind of late, Nick. Well, gee, I'm really sorry, Karen. I just got all caught up in trying to find someone to defend your mother in a murder trial. Let me guess, you're here because you want me to pick you to take over the company. Oh, let me guess, you weren't even going to consider me, were you? Come on, Karen, I am well aware of all your virtues, your business experience, your work with the Family Foundation. I promise you, I'm going to take all those things into consideration as I make a decision, okay? Done. You're not going to pick me. Come on, Karen. <laughs> oh. You know, I don't want to pick anybody. I got handed this live grenade. You're not going to pick me, it's that simple. If I had known when we were 10 years old that letting you see me with my shirt off was going to cost me the company, I never would have done it. But I guess I didn't know you then. And I don't know you now, Nick. Karen! I'm going to kill him. I'm seriously going to kill him. I might still recommend you. No, he won't. Once you see a person a certain way, that's how you see them. Nick doesn't take me seriously. No, no. How could he not? Ask him. You know what? I think I might just do that. No. See, I was kidding. No, no, no. Listen, let me care. I got to where I am today by recognizing and utilizing not only my own talents, but the talents of others. Nick, because he has a history with you, might not be able to see all of your gifts like I do. So let me talk to him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Patrick, I assure you I'm taking all your leadership qualities into consideration as I make a decision, okay? Nick, I don't care about the company. That's not why I'm here. Oh, okay. So what's up? Well, Dad wants me to write a heartfelt eulogy for Alan's memorial. He thinks it'll clinch the election. He's probably not wrong, regrettably. Well, I'm, I'm having a real tough time. With what, finding the words? 
the words. <laughs> Try the feelings. This damn thing's tomorrow. Patrick, you had two children with the woman. I mean, you must have some feelings for she her. She tried to kill me with a fire poker, Nick, and before that, she shot me in the leg, remember? I mean, call me callous. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Well, what am I supposed to do? I, I keep trying to come up with things, and all I can think about is Carmelita. Wait a minute. Are you two seeing each other again? No, no. She's still missing, but she's all I ever think about. Well, Pat, if, if she's really all that you can think about, why don't you try writing it about her? Carmelita. You write it about Carmelita, then you can replace her name with Ellen's when you're done. That's a great idea. All right. That's a great idea. <laughs> that was easy. You see it? Yeah. You too. Oh, and by the way, Nick, you, uh, you are going to pick me, right? Write the speech, Pat. Hey, Nick. <laughs> Glad I caught you. Hope I can say the same. Can I talk to you for a second? Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll cut you, please. I, I need a favor. It's about Karen. Come on, Simon lobbying on behalf of family members. Hear, hear me out, please. We both know Karen. She's a great girl. She's got a lot of amazing qualities. Agreed? But let's be honest. Running a billion-dollar multinational corporation isn't one of them. No. I'm in a tight spot. Karen asked me to talk to you because she doesn't trust you to make a fair decision in this matter. I, I don't think she trusts you much of anything anymore. Now, I, I, I was reluctant to get involved, but we know Karen. She wants what she wants. I mean, last week she wanted a, a, a Fendi bag. This week she wants Darling Enterprise. Why are you telling me this? Because I told her I'd talk to you. But when push comes to shove, I can't in good conscience sell you something you're too smart to buy. So, just do me this favor. If she ever asks you what I said, just try not to sell me completely down the river. <laughs> okay? Okay. Anyway. I'm glad I caught you. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Chair of Darling Enterprises. Really? In terms of loyalty and commitment and brains, that's the person best equipped to guide the company, I feel. All right then. The future of Darling Enterprises has just been secured. was no ordinary woman, my Ellen. No. Far from it. Ellen's special blend of courage and kindness combined to form a whole that embodied what a body it was. The American spirit. That uniquely American spirit that celebrated freedom, creativity, transformation. Does that sound like Ellen to you? I think he's delirious with grief. Sorry. Just not a moment goes by that I don't miss her. But I know that even though her corporeal being has left us, her spirit lives on in my heart. You know, I was born with every advantage a person could have. But Ellen made me feel like I was worth something. I just miss her so much. I love you. And now, here with a musical tribute, one of Ellen's favorite performers, Mr. Kenny G. Here we go. 
party? I've been expecting you. You really gonna do this? You put her in a difficult position by letting her attend, Nick. Go get her. Out of the way, please. Gentlemen. Mrs. Dowling, we're gonna have to ask you to come with us. She will do nothing of the kind. Sir, she's violated house arrest. Mrs. Dowling, please. Dance, please. Hey, get the hell away from my mother. Sir, step away or I will have you arrested. No, you step away or I'm gonna have you work on a crosswalk, chubby. You're not helping. That's it. Let's go, let's go. Well, counselor, there they go. Six major news outlets recording the brutal arrest of a grief-stricken woman. If you're looking at tainted jury pool in her favor. I don't think that's how it plays. It'll lighten me. I see a cold-blooded murderer whose sense of entitlement knows no bounds. She's a grandmother. She's a sociopath. Oh, great. Where are you going, moron? Sir, I am warning you, step back. Oh, what? Are you still sure you want to do this? Get a doctor! It is getting a little icky. I'll let her go with a warning. I'll send you the medical bills. Right. Oh. What the hell? What do you think you're doing? My job. I need to see you tonight. Not possible. Oh, how about I go perform a little duet with Mr. G about how you slept with the defendant's son hours before you arrested his mother for murder? You wouldn't. We paid for two songs. Ten o'clock, my apartment. By ten o five, you're out on your ass. You let her go. Take off the cuffs. And who the hell are you? I'm the family lawyer. I just consulted with your boss, and she said there's been a misunderstanding. Yeah, I guess you guys are gonna have to go get your jolly somewhere else. Maybe we can go roll a few bumps. That does it. You are coming down to the station with us. The hell I am, sir. I am serious. But you bring it, donut hole. Oh, hey, all oh, right, oh, right. Step back. I will take care of this. Oh, the hell oh, you oh, will. Good lawyer. Not in the mood, Brian. Hey, I just got arrested for assaulting a peace officer. I'm gonna need counsel, and I know how eager you are to defend a darling in open court. Anyway, it doesn't matter, because I get your whole thing, Nick. What are you talking about? The company. What about it? You want to run the company. <laughs> want to run the company? You said so yourself. You grew up slinking around the edge of a rich family, wondering why you of all people were so unlucky to be put that close to the prize and denied it every single day. That's not what I said. And now here you are, years later. I mean, far be it from you at this late date to pick a fight with Trip Darling, the one guy who could hand you the whole kitty on the silver monogram platter. Damn it, Brian, I picked you! Bull crap. Ask Trip. I handed him a memo yesterday with my recommendation for a successor, and it was you. Why would you do that? Because, Brian, you're the best person for the job. You've been the black sheep in that family for your whole life, and you're still willing to do anything for them. Like sabotaging court documents and getting people like Terry Duramian fired. You found out about that? And because you're a real pain in the ass. And when it's your job to run a $50 billion global enterprise, that's not such a bad thing to be. <sighs> Just take the case. Brian, why are you so intensely committed to get me to take this case? Because I know my mom didn't do it. And if the only way to get her off is for the son of the guy she's accused of killing to stand up in court and say she didn't do it, then that's what has to happen. She's innocent. And you used to be the kind of person who cared about stuff like that. Brian! Besides, we both know who killed our dad. Who? Come on. Who do you think? The woman he loved? Or the guy he betrayed for the past 40 years? Trip. Trip. Not that we'll be able to do anything about it. We all know how that works. Hello, ladies. Well, what happened? The officers involved in your little Donnybrook 
don't want to testify. Something about saving their pensions from the vengeful arm of the darlings. Sissies. Oh, God, just get them out of here. <sighs> Tough luck, huh, Counselor? I'm fine with it. You're not the darling I want anyway. Not a darling. Aren't you? Come on. You're the darlingest darling of them all. thinks you killed mommy. Mr. Darling! What, what can I do for you? I'm Connie Dallamure. I've heard a lot about you. I won't keep you. I just wanted to say that I saw the eulogy you delivered on the news. Yes. I just have to say, it was lovely. It felt like you were speaking straight from your heart to mine. To anyone who's lost a loved one, you'll make a great senator. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're four minutes late. I stopped to get these. You've got 60 seconds. All right. And tell me once and for all, did you or did you not set me up? I set myself up. Look. I've never lost a case, and I rarely face opposing lawyers who present even the slightest challenge, so I've developed this bad habit of getting involved with people close to the case, you know, as a way of keeping it interesting. That's all this was. Goodbye. So what, I'm like your handicap? <sighs> did you hear the way I screamed when we did it in your limo? Yeah? You're not a handicap. Then let me come inside. No, I can't risk losing this case, so if you don't mind... Well, will you hold these a sec? Oh, uh, I know you're trying my mom for murder, but... God, I love you so much. Jeremy, sex is just sex. This isn't about sex. This is about your face. You have the most beautiful face in the world, Nola. Your eyes. Your lips. Little tiny freckles. You know what I think about most when I remember that night, Nola? Don't tell me. The feeling of your ear. It's my upper lip. The the back of your head felt in my hand as I held it. Yeah. We both know this can't happen. I don't. But man, 60 seconds ran out 60 seconds ago. No one. I, um, I made my case for you as dispassionately as I could. Nick listened. You know, but to be honest, I don't think he was really interested in what I had to say. So after about an hour, I, I wrapped it up. And I thanked him for his time. So he's not going to pick me, is he? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just think at the end of the day... He doesn't take you as seriously as I do. CNBC has confirmed that the succession announcement, the press conference, will. Air live. Good. That's good. I'll take the case. Excuse me? I'll defend Letitia. Oh, that, that, that's wonderful news, Nick. May I ask you what caused you to change your mind? Yeah, we both know she didn't do it. Okay. And besides, Trent. We're family. Yeah, 
Hey, you look good. I have an interview with the Needham Gallery. That's good. Oh, whatever. I'm overqualified and I probably won't get it, but I'm not that psyched for it anyway. So why go? I gotta do something with my life. Kiki's in school all day, and since we're apparently not having another baby. I took the case. Letitia's. Yeah. Why? Because she's innocent. Look, it's complicated. No, it's not. It's really simple. You can't say no to the darlings. Lisa, would you just listen to me? I know what I'm doing. You used to have faith in me. Have some now. Please. See you at the press conference. Congratulations. Nick's decided to take your mother's case, and it's thanks to you. Well, I made a compelling argument, and Nick finally saw the wisdom. It's very impressive, son. Very. There are great things ahead for you. Don't doubt it. They're running downstairs. In light of all the recent challenges that have befallen our family and our company, it became incumbent upon me to choose a successor who will take over from Letitia the position of vice chair of Darling Enterprises. It has not been an easy task. All the candidates are extraordinarily talented and I love each and every one of them with all my heart but the board demanded a leader a decision maker who would usher in a great and prosperous new era for us all well, that was their mandate and suffice to say we are as of this moment uniformly thrilled with our pick so, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the new vice chair of Darling Enterprises, Nick George. room for the last half hour. Well, you're very popular tonight. Yeah. Lisa, I didn't know. Look, this was as much of a shock to me as it was to you. Do you think it's because you took the case? You know, I have no idea. We're supposed to sit down and talk about it, but we haven't had a chance with all of it. Yeah. Is... This what you want? You know, I can't say I've thought about it until now, but it's not so bad, you know? No, it's not so bad. Hey. What? Maybe I was wrong. About having a baby. 
Well, maybe you were right. Maybe we should do it. We are in a really good place right now. No. No, why not? Because. <laughs> you said you wanted a baby. I just don't think it's a good idea anymore. I'm sorry. Nick, can I steal you away for a second? Somebody I want you to meet? I, I will be right there. Go, Nick. Look, I want to continue this conversation. Go. I'm not going anywhere. Go. An old friend of mine. I haven't seen him in years. I've been telling him all about you. This is it, Nick.